right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2008 BMW 135i. Up front is a 3.0 liter inline six and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now this car has had a lot of work done to it. It has been swapped from a twin turbo setup to a single turbo, has a pretty gnarly tune on it, and for the first time ever in a shooting cars video, drag radials on the rear. Now for legal purposes, right now I'm not driving with the drag radials on. <laughs> So this is going to be quite the intense review and I don't really have to tell you why I'm excited about it. So let's get back to that N54 motor. Like I said, it's been swapped from a twin turbo just to a single turbo and I'll put some specs up on the screen. And right now on the current tune, it's making about 550 at the wheels, which is just stupid to think about. And so I will now let you guys enjoy 550. Third gear, he said, so we'll do third. <laughs> oh my God, there's a lot of turbo lag. Oh, oh. I gotta catch my breath. <laughs> yes, BMW! Yes, Eddie! Yes! This doesn't feel right, but at the same time, it feels perfect. Now, with all of that out of the way, one thing I wanna comment on about the driving feel is that right now, I'm driving it normally. I can talk at a normal volume. Me and the owner, Eddie, which, Thank you so much, Eddie, for letting me do this. We went out and got coffee this morning and we had a nice conversation actually about smart cars. It's a nice, calm, quiet, and collected vehicle. The clutch engagement is like any other car. The shifter feels good, clicks solidly into place. The steering is light enough to be able to be used every day, but heavy enough to still feel sporty. And sitting in traffic, we're idling at about 800, it's nice and quiet, and that is my favorite part of the driving experience of this car because yes, it will melt your face off. It'll make you cry, but then when you just have to go to the doctor's office, you just have to go to work, it's not in your face all the time. It's a switch hitter. I'm driving casually just like I would going to Barnes & Noble or Walmart, but then when I wanna turn it up, I could turn it up. I could turn it up a lot. Now we'll talk about the interior. Pretty typical BMW stuff in here, but we still got to touch on it. And so in front of me, I have pretty typical BMW gauges. On the left is my speedometer with fuel at the bottom, and on the right is my tachometer with oil pressure. I like the outside of the gauges. They look nice. I have a little information screen down at the bottom. Again, looks great, functions well, and I like it. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my volume commands and phone options, and on the right, I have my skip track favorite buttons, as well as this is an M Sport wheel. This is not an M wheel, but it's the M Sport package, that sort of thing. To the left of me, I just have my headlight switches on the door. I have my window switches and power mirrors. And up in the center, I do have a nice little navigation screen, information screen. Now, this is not the iDrive system. I've grown to really hate the iDrive system, and the one series from 2008 does not have it, which I am incredibly, incredibly thankful for. Down below that, two climate control vents. This is also where I'll find my traction control button, which I will be leaving on because I don't want to buy Eddie's One Series. And with drag radials and it's 34 degrees outside, I might. But before we get on with the rest of the video, I want to say thank you to the people who made this video possible. First up, cashforcars.com wants to buy your car. They will buy your car with a clean title, salvage title, running, non-running, whatever it may be. You can get your free quote by clicking the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com is the 
easiest way to sell your car. Within a couple of clicks, they'll come pick up your car in less than 24 hours. You don't even have to leave the couch and it's absolutely awesome. Next up, we have con plates. The con plate is a suction cup mount for your license plate when you don't want to mount it to the front of your car. If you have to legally have a front license plate like you do here in Illinois, but you don't want to stick it on the front of your car, you think it's ugly, you want to take it off for car shows, whatever it may be, you can actually just put your license plate into the suction cup holder and put it in your front windshield when driving around to remain legal. You can get your con plate in the description below and every sale helps out the channel. So make sure your car looks good with con plates. Last but not least, I wanna talk about the fixed OBD2 sensor. Now this is a Bluetooth sensor that you plug into your OBD2 port on your car and it gives you a ton of cool information like your check engine lights, how to fix your check engine lights, approximately how much it should cost, maintenance intervals like oil change, tire rotation, brake pads, when you should change that stuff out. This is absolutely fantastic for anyone into cars or anyone looking to get into mechanics. Fixed is offering my viewers a discount through that link, so go check it out and again, help support the channel. But with all of that out of the way, let's get on with the review. Then I have climate controls, really nice dual zone climate here, which is great for 2008. One second here. Sorry. CD player, AM, FM, and a DVD player, which is very, very interesting and I've never noticed in a one series like this. Then I do have my heated seat options, cigarette lighter and ashtray, and then the shifter itself. I love this shifter, super, super notchy. It feels great, it looks great, it functions really well. I love the feeling of it in my hand and that's all I can really ask for from a modern shifter. Then at the very bottom, I do have an unlabeled knob and that is for the center screen. It's for zooming and the navigation and I like it. It has good feedback. It's a little rudimentary, but you have to remember this car is 13 years old, so I can't knock it too hard comparing it to modern vehicles. Then I do have a little armrest and I do have a cup holder off to the left. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the one series. And unfortunately, it is a fail. But it's a little car. I don't expect it to carry my big water bottle. The seats are nice and comfortable. They do have decently high bolsters. And for me, they're starting to edge on slightly uncomfortable just because of how big I am. Now, if you don't weigh as much as the sun like I do, then these seats are going to be fine. But if you are a larger gentleman, a hefty boy, a chunk, these seats they start to get a little too slim for my liking, but again, I know I'm not in the majority. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's do a back seat review. All right, I don't expect much from these back seats, but I am a professional, and so I will try them out. Okay, so we're in the back of the 2008 BMW 135i. Not great, it's a coupe, and it's really only meant to be a two-seater. These back seats, could I fit back here? Yes. Am I happy about it? No. I don't really get any amenities back here. Uh, I get little armrests and I get seat belts. No center console. Well, I have this little tray down here, but that's about it. Nothing really going on back here. Don't expect to take people in your one series. The one series is not meant for that. The two series is not meant for that. The three series is where you actually start to get usable back seats. Um, so if back seat space really matters to you, start looking at the three and up. I wanna get back to driving it now. <laughs> now we gotta talk about the looks. I really like the look of the one series. I think the two series still holds that place in my heart in terms of looks, but you have to remember they stopped selling the one series here in the US in 2014. So these cars are no longer that modern. I love the mismatched wheels. And that is because I learned this today, drag radials actually require two valve stems for the tires. So a previous owner put those special wheels on the back so it would have the two valve stems for the drag radial. But now we have to talk about my final thoughts on this particular BMW 1 Series and wow. This, first of all, let's talk about the downsides. I'm not a big fan of the infotainment system. Even though it's better than the iDrive system, it's still kind of clunky and still outdated. I'm not a big fan of the seats, but that's just a me problem and not a BMW problem. With those two things out of the way, this might be the best, most enjoyable BMW I've ever driven. Now, I love the BMW M2 competition. I reviewed one last year 
and I think it'll go down as one of my favorite vehicles I've ever driven. It certainly is right now. And it's very, very powerful. If you want this feeling, but in a stock production car that you can buy brand new, seek out an M2. It's the closest you're gonna get to this little rocket. But with that being said, this makes more power, it sounds better, it's more fun to drive with the manual. Oh. Oh my goodness. I haven't felt this much joy in quite some time. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I think this car is the perfect size, perfect amount of power. Now the owner, Eddie, which again, thank you, Eddie. One of the kindest, most generous people I've ever met. He has big plans for this car. He wants to change things up and add some more horsepower to it, which is great. But right now, I really think it's sitting perfect. Just from my outside perspective, not a whole lot I would change about this car. Now, I finally know what it's like to be the nose cone of a German missile. <laughs> oh, sweet baby rays! Oh my god! I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but I guarantee you, you didn't have as much fun watching as I did driving because this is one of the all-time greats. One more time to send us out. Thank you, Eddie. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Third Gear, send us out, please. Oh my god!